Wow, that actually turned out pretty good. Check out how we did it. Turned out really good, guys. Talk to you a little bit later. All right, so I got all the chrome in these. I was just going to tell you the guys that real quick. I've got like three or four videos on putting chrome in. Or five, six videos now. And I do it without lube, and I've done it with lube. The lube is actually a bit easier. My latest one shows without it. But it just shows different ways to do it. There's a lot of different ways. Um, and no way is wrong. It just matter what whatever works for you. So I just wanted to put that in the beginning of this video. So if you want to look it up, you can look up the other video, the older video that I used the lube and I just pushed it in by hand and it wasn't that hard. Uh, been a while since I made that was well, six years ago or so, but anyway, it's out there. So we got the headliner ready, uh, laid out. This is the material. This is like a vintage cloth. Okay. Well, it's kind of cool. Like, uh, kind of like, not like mohair, but similar. Uh, the thing about this material is it doesn't have a lot of stretch in it. So it's going to be a little tough. I've never put one of these particular headliners in a bug. So you guys are going to learn with me. I really don't know how it's going to stretch out. But it looks like to me, when I have it laid out here, this is, you know, this is this side that shows. This is obviously the back side. Um, it's going to be turned over in a little bit here, but if you see how it's shaped, it looks like they shaped it to fit in the oval window. So, uh, you know, you have to, with this kind of cloth, you're going to have to shape it to make it fit. Um, I like to use on these older cars, I like to use the, uh, this is the five piece. Okay. But it only has three because the other two, I don't know. They're not in there, so I got this with the car, and I'm going to use it because it's nice cloth. Um, I, I would prefer, if I was going to buy one again, I would use the seven-piece on the early car. The seven-piece, I'll show you how they, where they work, so you know the difference. If you're going to buy one, you know, on an earlier car like this, I believe they came seven, so you had one insert that went just from here over to there. And had the bows in it and then you had another one that went from here down and went from the front all the way to the back corner and down okay and you had another piece that went across and the other one went from the back all the way to the front corner so that's one two three and then two on the ends four five and then one little piece that went here and one that went over there so the seven pieces the the one that came in this car was a seven piece um, so hopefully i'll be able to get this one to stretch around that back window it's going to be tricky um, and hopefully they when they stitched it they did their job right and see how it's already forming to the shape I know there's these wrinkles in here. They should stretch out, and then uh, they'll look good. When I'll, I may have to use the steamer in here and kind of get them all out when I'm all done or towards the end. We will see how that goes. I don't know. Uh, this headliner's been sitting in a box for, I don't know, probably 30 years. But it still looks good. It looks like it'll still work. It's not mouse infested or anything. doesn't smell. So I'm going to go with it. And I think it looks nice with the color. And it's all going to have red interior, so um, that's, it should work out just fine. So, first thing, first, this stuff is what the... I've had guys go, Mike, you, you, what do you, I get the stuff with the bubbles. So I was like, no, no, this is Frost King. This is just... All it is is... You get this in the pipe section at Home Depot. And it has sticky, sticky, sticky on this side. And just foil on this side and it's foam in the middle this works good this works kind of like dynamat where i'm going to put it on the headliner so i'm going to put strips of it up here on the headliner not to do the whole the whole roof but just put some strips up there to keep the noise down so that's what i'm going to put this on here um when you use when you do put this stuff on you need to spray some of this uh like uh what is the spray glue on 
because this adhesive that's on here, I don't trust it. I don't, I don't think it's going to be long enough. So I put some of that adhesive on. You put it on, let it dry, then it's contact adhesive. So, and then I put this stuff on. So I'm going to do little strips of that. We'll show you that. And then we're going to start putting in the headliner. So um, we'll see how it goes. I really don't know. I, I, I've, like I said, I've never put in one of these kind of headliners. I've only put in, I put in, I've been successful at doing the mohair kit. Um, the key thing on the mohair kits is if you're going to use a mohair headliner, you need to make sure that you use some tape. Like if you're doing a mohair headliner, I'll put some tape along here so I have a nice straight line of glue and I'll put glue just barely at the top edge, a nice straight line of it and I'll pull my tape off so that I have a nice straight line of glue. Because if you have the glue all willy-nilly like this, and you put your headliner up, it's going to look all willy-nilly. It'll look terrible. So if you have a nice straight line of glue, and you and, and you put on that section, like the first thing you put on, I think, on those is the sides. And then you put the top in. Yeah, I forget. I can't remember. Um, but you put this, when you put the sides in, you glue the top edge, pull it around, and you just keep it tight as you go along and uh, put it in that way um, but make sure wherever you put glue so if I got to put glue around here if I'm putting glue around here I'm gonna put tape right here make sure I don't have spillover in a really raggedy glue edge if your glue edge is all raggedy you put it on you're gonna see that edge all ugly and it's best to just use some tape or if you can brush a straight line with a brush it's always the best way to go. And don't put glue anywhere other than the very edges. Here and here. No glue in the middle. Glue's in the middle, it'll look all raggedy. So you want the you want to stretch it over that area. So it's gonna be glue here, glue down here and the where the door panel is. You can see there, I would have glue down here and glue up there. None none in the middle. So that's all the key things to know when you're putting it in. If you put glue all over the place, it's going to just look all raggedy and gross um, and pull it tight over the areas. So, on this, hmm, boy, I guess I need some foam. I don't know if I have any. So, uh, i got to build this out. So, if I put these things in first, the ends, these things here, I'm going to go in first, okay? Put them in here, clamp them down. Then we'll put foam, a little bit of foam over here. Because see, this is supposed to have normally. This had that that, that kind of a cotton foam. And I don't think you can buy that anywhere now. The stuff that they have is synthetic. It doesn't work the same as the old cotton. So you've got to use like regular foam. Put it on just the surface and shape it and make it nice and smooth and straight. If your foam's all raggedy. Your headliner is going to look raggedy so you got to make sure that your foam is down nice and tight and smooth so i'll probably just put these ends in trying to figure this out and then i may put the sides up and then i'll do the foam afterwards or something let's see and this goes down I'm trying to remember here uh, but yeah this one goes over that yeah so I gotta put these on first. So I gotta have the foam on here. That's right, I'm trying to remember. So when I'm doing the perforated ones, I use the five, p or yeah, one, this is the three, yeah, five, five piece. If I'm doing the early car, I'll use the seven piece. That means like a, a rag top or something like that. I'll use a seven piece if it's got the, um, if it has the, the earlier car where it had the middle section and all that, I'll make it the same. Um, but on the later models, I'll use the uh, perforated one and they come in. You can, I don't think you can get them in a seven piece, but I wouldn't do it anyway. I'm going to use those and I do all those in a five piece. So this is going to kind of go in. So if you've got a perforated headliner and you kind of want to do it yourself, this might kind of give you some pointers. This is going to be harder to do than a regular perforated. Perforated ones, you can stretch the material. 
you can heat it up with a heat gun and it'll shrink but you got to be careful not to get it too hot if you get it too hot it will melt you know take a scrap piece and play with it and learn where that it, all of a sudden you'll see the holes start to get a little bit bigger and it's over that's a ruined piece so you got to get it hot right up to that point and then get away from it and let it cool down and when it cools down it'll shrink so that's how you do the other ones after you get it in so it's all a method you start in the front pull it to the back and then there's a method of you tuck it in and you kind of pull it a little bit, not too tight, but just tight enough to where the wrinkles aren't there. And you just work your way to the back and you're going to probably have to do it three or four times front to the back, front to the back until it looks even. So sometimes you're going to pull it too tight. And you have to loosen it up a little bit and just go back and forth and wiggle it, you know, back and forth until it looks even. And then you do the rest with, you know, I'm not sure how to shrink this, so... Probably get it wet and then dry it. Pretty sure that will shrink it, but I don't know. We'll find out. Those are things I don't know. This material I don't think I've ever used, so that's going to be fun. All right, so that's the beginning of it. We'll get into it now. All right, so here's what we've got. It's hard to see in here. I don't have the light in here yet, but let's get this out of here so you can see. This is some um, harder foam. I'm going to put this down, glued in like that. And if you can see, I cut this at an angle because, see, I don't want a hard edge right there. So I want it to kind of transition. So I'm going to lay this down first. Then I'm going to put quarter inch foam over that. A quarter inch over that and kind of wrap it and then I'll have the cloth go over that so uh, they that they used to make this like a cotton batting and they don't it I mean I'm certain you can get it somewhere but it's not ready readily available anymore most of your pulse supply does not carry that so you have to work it out with other stuff so anytime you have a hard edge you'll see it when you pull the cloth over it so you've got to have it transition nicely and be straight. If it's raggedy, it'll look raggedy right through it. So at the top, I cut this at an angle because I'm gonna have a fold right here. So that's gonna help hide that. You know, think about those things in advance. We're gonna lay this down and glue this in place. Hopefully that helps a little more. I got some lighting going on in here, but I'm in the shadow of it, so that's not helping much. Let's see if I can move it over. Ah, maybe that's better. But anyway, I've got this set up. I've got a got it down there, and it's into a shadow, so I'm not, uh, you know, just don't want a hard edge like right in a visible area down into a shadow. It won't show up much. So I'm gonna work with that. This is a little bit lumpy here, but once I get the cloth on here, it'll kind of pull over that, and I'm gonna pull it down tight and glue it in down here. So, all right, so here's what has to be done now is I'm going to put this in. You put this side in. I've already hammered a couple of men so we can kind of see what it's like. These have to be opened up pretty far. So that has to be hooked on the end of this, on the end of that, that little tab. You have to put this in the groove here. Let's see if I can get it up here. I've already done it. You can see it has to be all the way locked in. If it's not all the way in, it'll just come right out. 
So you got to knock it way in there. Okay, and it can take a couple hours sometimes to put these in. I've had trouble with them trying to get them to lock, especially this one. Like the like the original ones you get from like TMI or whatever, they have a pretty strong hook on them. These don't, and it has to grab all the way on the edge where it just falls out later. So you got to really take your time and get that on there. So I'll bring you back in when I've got it all done. All right, so to do this, you need 
upholstery grade um, this is spray glue here spray weight this one's pretty good you cannot go to Home Depot and buy this they don't sell it it's not the same stuff this is Lando top and trim the brush grade stuff you put it on with a brush and uh, that they may not even sell it you know it's so funny you get the stuff you go and you kind of go hey man hey there's no glue on your shelf and they go um you need some glue um well yeah um yeah i need some glue uh okay and they you know it's like it's like buying drugs okay <laughs> in california so i'm not going to tell you how you do it but it's out there uh, you can go to another state and get it too, but there's nothing else you can use. There's no substitute for this. It's got to be the really good grade. Because what you got to do is keep pulling it. I noticed mine came out overnight. Uh, you got to keep pulling it, not really tight. It's about not about pulling it super, super tight. It's about pulling it even. You just kind of give it some oh, pull over here. You know, untack it over here and pull it back a little bit more and go back and forth and back and forth until all the wrinkles are gone. And that's the process going front to back all the way along. Just, you know, it takes hours, you know, to do. Now, the thing I don't know how to do on this, and maybe, I don't know, we'll see. Maybe somebody can explain how to do it because right here, I'm going to end up with one hell of a wrinkle to try and pull that out. So... Yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure how I'm going to work that out. I'm not going to worry about that. That's going to be at the very end. I'll get you guys back a little bit. So you can see. Um, uh, yeah, it's going to be at the very end when I do the corners. Because well, the thing is, I have to pull this part out straight and even all the way along. And then cut here and then get it all. You know, you have to cut it here so so that this will go in. If you don't have this cut, it won't go in. So you got to know where that cut's going to be by pulling it evenly along through all here anyway that's how you do it this part i just tape it put on the glue pull the tape off start putting it in place just kind of get the glue on both surfaces it with the if you do this with the mohair uh, it ends up going through the cloth so you got to be it's a lot more fun and you can get it kind of off. The whole thing is, is we're just using this to hold this in place so that we can get it all stretched out in the right way. And then after it's all in place, then we'll tuck it in. Well, I have to re-glue it again before we get to that. we we'll have to glue it, you know, so that it stays in place. So, but you got to kind of work your way to the back and keep it stretched. This, I don't know. I've never done this material. I don't know if I'll be able to get it that nice, but we're trying. Looks like behind here, I've got to do the same. Tape it, glue it, just like that. Pull this off. Yeah, once I recentered the wrinkles here, then at some point when I feel like it's gonna be right, then I'll tuck those corners in behind those clips. And uh, I think that's where I'm going to start tucking it in is I think I've got it pretty well centered. I know you guys can see all this wrinkle stuff. It's like the, it's not really wrinkles. It's actually the cloth. Um, I, I don't know if it's, it's probably going to be able to be brushed out of it. I think, I, I don't know. I'm going to get it wet and play with it with a brush once I get it in. I'm hoping it's going to, I don't know, I, I don't really care if it's got that little bit of that patina look. Kind of makes it look all right, you know, it's an old car, so it's supposed to look old. So, yeah, I'm going to try to, I think I've got it well centered. You know, I had to unglue that, recenter it, push it out. you got to do it a bunch of times. Just take it off, put it back on. That's why you got to have that good glue. You know, take it off, put it back on, take it off, put it back on, take it off, and then use the spray to re-wet it you know where you can see where it's on the cloth just spray it on there real lightly and just let it dry and then it'll re-tack it and then you can use it again if, you know it's a little that's it's i can't really film it but you kind of get the idea 
Now what's going to happen when I put this in is there's going to be a, it's going to, it's not going to want to go in around the oval. I don't know. I think guys can do that. I mean, there's definitely a way to do it. And not, you know, and not have seams in the corners, but I've also seen, like on the regular bug, I've seen seams in the corners, but I've seen ovals without them. And I, I don't remember, you know, honestly, I, uh, but I think it could be done either way. I mean, there's a way to tuck it in more of it in there, you know, don't cut it, but just keep roll it up and tuck it behind there. But I don't know if I'm going to do that. I think I'm going to go with the typical, you know, corner seams. Just fold it in the corner, so we'll see how that goes. So on a rectangular window, normally I don't think they even have that seam, the tuck seam right there. Um, you just go straight back to the window, and then you always end up with those corner seams on it. Just so you know, if you're doing a square or rectangle window car, you know, late model. Uh, that's the only real difference and like i said if i had a seven piece i could get this thing in here for sure like flawless but i don't, I don't really want to spend extra money on it when i've got this uh but anyway we'll take a look at it in a little bit and uh see what's going on but i just want to make sure you guys know if you're doing a square window car rectangle window i think you just go straight back and it i don't know it it just kind of play with it you know just keep pulling and then let you know Pull a little tighter, a little looser, a little, little tighter, a little looser, and then when you get the final all done on the with the uh, with the perforated, just heat it up, and all of a sudden heat it up nice and warm, and let it cool off, heat it up, let it cool off, heat it up, let it cool off, and all of a sudden the wrinkles just kind of disappear if you don't have too much of them. I mean, if they're really big, heavy, fat wrinkles, yeah, they'll still be there. So you got to get them pretty well down, and then start heating it up, cooling it off, and and get it pretty good so I just put some foam over the things there the prongs or whatever because they'll just tear the cloth so uh, they definitely need to be foamed over and then if it's below this edge see it's gonna go across here and then it's gonna get on that edge right there so uh, if it's below that edge then it won't show up that little wavy edge it will show up if you if you got it way up here it'll show up you'll see it so i'm going to try and get that tucked in i think what i was looking at here i'll tell you if i i use this to get it pulled back right so i used i put it in the middle there and pulled it back to hold it in place that's what i use that for now i take that out if i tuck it in even on each side See if I can show you. So if you can see, I've got it so that try and get as much wrinkle out of there as possible, much wrinkle out of there as possible, because you aren't gonna be able to get it back. Only with just a little bit of pull in here, and that's it. But if I can get it even across here, and maybe I can get some of that sack out of there, tuck it, and then put it into the corner. Then what you do is kind of put this down and then work it to the corner and let your fold be in the corner right over on each side. Uh, then I don't need to put the seams in, I think. That's what I'm looking at right now. Um, it's just, you know what, it's just, you just got to keep doing stuff over and over and over. When you do one of these headliners, when I, every one I've done, it's not about getting it right the first time, it's about... Like I've been stretching out these sides and then I got a little one over here, a little wrinkle there. So I'll pull that down again and just keep working them until they're gone. I just like a little bit right here came up from playing around with something. And it, so uh, you got to keep work, reworking that glue. That's why you need really good glue and you don't till the very end, then you tuck it all in. But on the back, you got to tuck it in ahead of time from what I'm seeing here. So I'm going to keep playing with this until, you know, it's, I've had to re-glue it like six or seven times and just keep trying until I get it situated. Like I've got a little bit too far to the right. So 
that'll have a wrinkle there if I'm not careful. See, this one doesn't as much when I tuck it all the way in. Okay, when I tuck it all the way in here, it does. So you gotta kind of center it up. It's just playing, 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 playing until it finally goes in. All right, so this is where I think I'm laying it out to is uh, it's hard to see for you guys because I gotta be so close to it. But I've kind of got, I mean, these aren't wrinkles in here. This is just the texture of the material. So I've kind of got it so it's stretched out where it'll fit in here. Okay, and there's, you know, a little bit of wrinkle here, but I can probably pull that in, um, pull it out, just uh, work it out of there. Um, and you kind of get it where, <clears throat> where I think it'll work so if I cut this in the middle say where the oval window is I think I can wrap that and it'll pull this a little tighter so you can see that pulls just kind of get it figured out where it needs to be and then if I can get this little wrinkle out of this corner then I think uh, that's where I need to make it and then what I'm gonna do is pull this back see if I can figure that out. I'm going to have to pull this back off over here. Okay. This is the type of thing you got to do is pull things back off and then hammer that closed right there. And it'll, uh, and hopefully I can pull that out. See that one, I think, yeah, right here. So if I put this here, that'll kind of pull that out, right? The wrinkle out of that. And then the rest will come out when I put the oval window in. So you kind of, yeah, yeah, you got to think like, it's like playing chess. So you got to think like five moves ahead. And then look at here, how this goes. Where is this going to tuck in? If I have that on there and I can put everything to the fold in the corner. So that's that. So I think that's where I need to make it. So what I'll do now is I'll pull this back off and fold. And I'll take my uh, putty knife tuck it in like that and then knock down the the edge and leave that that'll be the crease uh, I guess that's how you do it I, I really know I've never put one of these in so we'll see how it looks when I'm done hopefully I do it right
Hopefully, guys, you can see okay. I don't know, but I've been doing a lot of this off the camera. There's just too much time. So I was trying to glue straight lines on stuff like this. You know, you can do it by using tape, but I'm just going to use a brush and get it straight. You don't want to get glue all over this whole thing. If you're doing one of these yourself. And then when I get done, uh, I don't know if I'll get it on camera or not. But I got to get a... Uh, a, not a heat gun. I can't use a heat gun on this, but a steamer. Try and steam this stuff to get it to look straight. So, but there's a, there's like some pressed in wrinkles from it sitting in the box for all those years. Now, you know, there's just like a couple of different things. You know, I could just say forget it and just get a whole new headliner and all that, but. You know, then I've got basically TMI, you know, yeah, you get one of their mohair headliners. I don't know if you guys have ever done one of those, but man, those things are just, it, it, I don't think it's automotive material. It's just real thin. And uh, so I put straight lines of glue on here. I don't put glue on the middle because I'm going to pull it tight and just use that no foam you know the foam that they used back then was is obsolete they don't have it anymore really I mean, it's it's somewhere available but i'm gonna say not readily available so you, you you can only get i don't know where you even get it at you have to get it from you know somewhere far away germany or something like that maybe and it's old they just don't use it anymore so it's getting glue on both sides right now and then I'll just lift it off and then I'm going to cut this is one difficult here I'm trying to remember where you got your scissors to get out of the car so I'm gonna give it like about that much overlap. I'm gonna fold this guy over. Check it out. Put a little bit of glue on here. So again, this is the last part. And you know, I've got a few bad areas, some a couple of bad ones up in the corners, and it just don't look the greatest, but like I said, it's it's difficult material. This is not your typical headliner stuff like if this was a perforated one I think I pretty much would have it pretty nice it would be I want to say it'd be really pretty much spot on but when it's uh, this sort of material here it's just you know it's not easy All right. Look at my other side. Can't look at both sides at the same time, so. But you want them in the ballpark of the same place. About like that. I'll flip it over, hold it steady. You guys probably can't even see what I'm doing, but it's one of the hard parts about filming this is it just getting the camera in the right place is near impossible so flip it over cut it then glue it yeah. try not to get glue on the upholstery it cleans off with acetone but it's it's a pain uh, the the TMI anyway I was saying about the TMI ones they're the the what they call them the replica uh, mohair this is a vintage cloth and I don't know if you can even get this material anymore probably not so with the replica mohair the problem with those is 
is that it's just really thin material. The glue soaks right through it. So if you, you put too much glue on, you gotta use the spray glue only and you have to tape it off. If you try and use this glue, you'll put too much on and as soon as you put the cloth down, it just goes right through it and it looks horrible. Okay. I pull it tight. Pull it tight and then just kind of run my finger. This side I'm going to flip over. Put more glue on there. But nothing in the middle because that's what you're pulling tight. If you put it in the middle, it'll look all wrinkly and weird. I'm not an expert at these headliners, but I've been, you know, they're okay looking what I'm done. I'm not going to say they're like really professional. To see how much it takes out, you know, I don't really know. I've never used this material. So anyway. Well, let's try some stuff and then get it a little better. Let's see what it looks like now. I'll show you here. So we're looking at over there in the corner. You know, see the, the little marks in there? If you can kind of see right there. That is not a wrinkle. That's just a mark that's in the material. But again, if you're looking at from far, far away like this, it looks fine. So it looks good enough to me as far as that goes. Especially when I get my carpet in here and my seats. The primary focus is going to be the seats, not the headliner. Headliner is not something you... And these parts up here, I don't know what to do up there with that. I have no idea how to make that look better. That's the best I can do with that. Um, those very corners, there just isn't... Uh, there's just no way to do it with this material. With the perforated stuff, you can do a little better than that, of course. But with this, I don't know. I have no answers for that. But if you can see all this marks and all this stuff like the uneven, I've been there with brush at that brush over there. And I've been using that, that brush, kind of brushing out stuff. And it was worse. And I've gotten it to look this good. So with all those marks in there, when you stand back and look at it, it just kind of blends in. It just looks aged. It looks like a old headliner. You know, they make material like that that's actually uneven so like I said it's fine for me but you know because the other option is go with TMI's cheap little thin stuff and this is way better material and I'm certainly not gonna put a, a perforated one in a early oval just look inappropriate totally so let's try the uh, steamer see what happens well, I don't know if you guys can see I'm letting the steamer warm up again it's right here this little thing that was worse than that. So, yeah, and all the little tiny spots here went away. I'm amazed. That really is what you need to use on this. And I got this part super tight. It was wrinkled right here, too. So, anyway, we'll give it a little more time. It does take a long time. I can't film it all. But um, all I do is just... Get this thing warm. Let's get it warm. I'll bring you back in. All right. She's boiling, I guess. It sounds a little different than it did before, so. I don't know. Maybe it's over full or something. I just sit there and just go really super slow over the cloth. If that will go away, it's probably going to take a few minutes, a few different times trying. I got my level here. Maybe it's above full. 
it does take a long time I just keep going over it and if you can see like these little marks and stuff it just kind of goes away looks pretty good see how that's just gone I don't have my lighting in here but this is my cord for my light so we'll take a look at it when I'm all done see it just takes a long time so I just got to keep going over and over it so like this wrinkle right here I'll just keep getting it hot just like you do with a blow dryer or a heat gun when you got the other one just go over it and over it and then leave it alone for a few minutes come back and all of a sudden it's gone you can see that it's going away right now anyway we'll bring it back that looks look how much better that looks over there just a few minutes with the steamer right here that was a heavy wrinkle right there go up here and do all around here get all of it so I'm not sure why that's got such a heavy wrinkle in it but we'll try doing all this down here and maybe it'll bring it down you guys can see that it's going away just keep doing it it's just shrinking the cloth Gotta go up here again do this look at that it's going away give that about 10 minutes or so of doing that and it's gone I'll bring you guys back in when I get it all done all right look at that <laughs> Every time I just keep going over it until it looks right, just keep going. I mean, this is, I've got a good 30 minutes of doing this right now. I'm going to play with those corners a little more and try and get those a little nicer. They, they don't look that bad in, in person. They look worse on the camera. I got to let my steam warm up again. Now I'm just doing these spots. And this one here is almost gone. I, just been going over. I go over it, then let it set for a few minutes, just like you do with the heat gun. Go over it, you know, get it nice and warm and steamed up and all that. And I kind of do the outer areas around it, or it might be. And it just starts shrinking the whole thing. Now you touch it over here. Look, I mean, that was sagging, right? That's like nice and tight now. <laughs> crazy I never done this kind of cloth so this is kind of amazing this is just vintage cloth as what's called uh, they sell it to poster supply places I, I don't know they have it around but just keep going over it nice and slow hotter you get it the better so the steam you know that's what I'm trying to do and that shrinks it yeah anyway I'll bring you back in. All right, let's look at it now. This is after like two hours of steaming everything. I, I can go through and do even more yet, but I don't know how much more I'm going to do. But I got, remember that corner over there? Look at that. <laughs> the slower you go with the steam, I'm still going to work on, I think, the front. Uh, but I kind of run out of time right now. I even did these down here, and they were just like wrinkled on the bottoms. And they could use a little bit more, but I mean, that steamer just really takes the stuff out of it. I mean, even the weird little lines and stuff are gone pretty much. There's just a little bit right there, kind of faint over there, but oh, man, I can totally live with that. I mean, that doesn't look bad, really. You know, it looks actually pretty good. You know, and once I get the carpet in here and all that, the windows. And the door panels in. I mean, how often do you look up? You know, you don't look up very often, really. So, yeah, I think that's going to be looking good for me. Yeah, that turned out really good. You didn't even see it. Let's get you guys down here. Wow. Yeah, it looks pretty good. Hopefully, it looks good in the camera. I, it's, there's some streaks in it and stuff like that, but I think, so when you do this here, it's kind of going to mess it up a little bit when I turn the lights off. We turn one off, turn two off, well, 
turn one light off and just kind of dim it a little bit. That's more like what it's going to look like outside. So it's not going to look bad at all. It's just, you know, look inside and go, wow, there's a headliner. That's about it. And it doesn't look like it's got giant wrinkles in it. It doesn't look like a diaper. This up here kind of does, but I've been playing with that. And I think I got that side pretty good. It's still wet, you can see. Um, but if you just go really, really slow with that steamer and then go back over it again. See, I'm going to try and get some of this out. And it's, believe it or not, that wrinkle right there, I could almost get that whole thing out of there. That big, giant wrinkle by just steaming it really slowly. And I was doing some big ones back in the corners. There was some junk back in the corners back there where the glue had stuck. And all I did was take my little hook and then hook inside of it, hook in the cloth and pull it back off. And then just steamed it really, really slow until it just went away. So that's pretty neat. Yeah. Anyway, I say that's pretty much good enough. I'm just going to do some touch-ups on it and I'm going to call it good. And tell me what you guys think in the comments. I'll talk to you in the next one. Please like, share, and subscribe.